famous Roy Chadwick design built up in Chatterton, north of Manchester. Originally designed as a twin engine bomber, but those early Rolls Royce engines weren't very reliable, so they fitted four Rolls Royce Merlins, and it became the mainstay of Bomber Command during World War II. On average, something like a third of all bomber crews were killed on each raid. Amazingly high carnage rate, yet still people went out and did it. That's the Avro Lancaster. It is possible, if you travel, to see the two flying at the same time. Just taken off is the Heinkel 111, and followed by the B-17. So, the of the Luftwaffe when they were attacking the UK during World War II, and in fact most of the footage you see of the Air Force flying over sort of vast formations of these things, almost turning the sky to dark, so many of them, but they weren't a very big uh, capability in terms of bomb load, they didn't do too well. And again, they were quite easy meat for the Royal Air Force fighters. The Hurricanes tended to concentrate on the bombers, and the Spitfires tended to concentrate on the Messerschmitt 109 fighters. Then, of course, the Americans joined with the Boeing B-17 and B-24. The B-17 is the Flying Fortress, which you see now. And, of course, this particular model is actually a film star. If any of you have watched the movie Memphis Bell, there was a series of aircraft built for Memphis Bell, the movie, and this is one of them. This is actually in the movie. Oh, look at that. Isn't that fantastic? That is amazing. These guys put on a magnificent display yesterday. Really close. Really low. So get your photographs while you can, folks, because this is fabulous. Get those cameras. Amazing sound out there as well. Brilliant.
don't see this very often, folks. You really don't. That is amazing. <laughs> Interesting, ladies and gentlemen, when the Americans first joined the war and brought their B-17s across and their liberators across to operate out of the east of the country on the daylight raids over Germany, they actually started putting camouflage on them and they came to the conclusion pretty darn quickly that actually it's no point painting the darn things, you might as well leave them with bright silver, nobody's going to miss one of those as it's flying past, especially when it's a part of several hundred formation so um, camouflage seemed a bit fruitless they were very heavily armed something in the region of 10 to 12 50 caliber machine guns depending on which particular version and a rear turret top turret front turret what they call the ball turret some had guns and what they call the cheeks some had large side guns and those 50 cal machine guns had quite strong hitting power actually much more effective than the British 303 machine guns doesn't that look absolutely wonderful Uncle 111, which is the one leading at the moment, to an engine ag in Mediterranean camouflage, operated all over the German near of influence, Mediterranean, Russia, Europe, Northern Europe. And by far and away the most numerically Again, for the sort of service in the Spanish Civil War, fighting on the side of Franco. Hugely successful mainstay of British Bomber Command. That's when they're flying this kind of slot. Steve tells me, uh, just as he was landing then, Andy was saying, Whatever you do, don't bounce. <laughs> You can see why. <laughs> okay, Uncle coming into land. Here we go. Another fabulous landing. Come on, folks, show your appreciation. Andy just checking wheels functioning. Showing the movie effects of the smoke system on the inner engine and just about ready flaps down briefing in for that final curving approach in 
imagine the strains of Danny Boy playing, watch the movie, and the game. Fantastic, <laughs> well done guys, phenomenal show. Now I'm going to hand over to Tony for a little while so I can stretch my legs and do other things, so I'll talk to you later.